Hello my friend, in this video I'm going to do a breakdown of my song Lovesick and show you how I spent about $200 Canadian to get over 10,000 streams on Spotify and landed three editorial playlists. I'm going to do a breakdown of kind of all of the strategies that I did in this single release and uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn quite a few tips and be able to apply this to your own music and let's jump right into this. So this is the song Lovesick, I released it on July 11th and to date it's gotten 12,343 streams and about 8,000 listeners and 1,164 saves. So right off the bat, I wanted to let you know that this is my first time kind of doing one of these breakdowns. So hopefully it is useful and I'll get better them over time. So if you have any comments on how I can improve these, let me know if there's anything you want to see. But to give you an overview of what I'm going to be showing you in this video, I'm going to do a uh, kind of an overview breakdown of the results that I got, a review of the stats because I do collect the data on a daily basis so that you can see that. We'll be diving into my Spotify for artists to get a good deep dive into that and also looking into the Facebook ads that I was running. We could look at the campaigns, the ad sets and the actual ads and we'll also be able to do a review of the social media posts that I did for this release. So let's dive right into it. So as an overview of this song, um, I spent $203.29 in Canadian dollars. Um, in uh, Facebook and Instagram ads, and we'll go into that a little bit more in uh, a couple minutes, I suppose. In the first 28 days, this song got 11,083 streams. In the first 28 days, the new followers that I accumulated was 189. And also in the first 28 days, it was added to 242 playlists. And this is includes user playlists and it's mostly user playlists, I should say. And then also it was added to three editorial playlists. So let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into this. So the first thing is uh, the stream tracker. So we're gonna open this up and take a look at it. And also I should mention that if you'd like a copy of this stream tracker so you can track your own streams like this, uh, there will be a link in the description below to a free Spotify release check checklist that I use and it actually has all the things that I do to on a release by release basis to make sure that I have a pretty chill and release and a pretty well done release and it also includes a link to this tracker in that checklist it's a pretty cool interactive checklist so it also provides a lot of information on each step as well so completely free and you can check it out in the description below so let's just go ahead and have a look at this so it looks like I ran Facebook ads for the first 11 days. I started the release on a Monday and I highlighted each Friday because Friday is the release radar pushes that happen. Um, so I ran it on the first Monday up until the Thursday before the second release radar to kind of maximize that. And overall, I, uh, the first four days I spent $30 Canadian per day, then slowly winded it down to about around $10 per day for the uh, last kind of week stretch there. Um, Taking a look at things here, it looks like the editorial kicked in on the seventh day. Um, and that's when um, it looks like the editorials were added. It looks like I did forget to add in the streams. In general, it looks like before the editorial kicked in, the save rate was about 50%. So 50% of people that were listening to it were saving the song to their own playlist. And the listen rate was at around two. So on average, um, each listener was listening to the song at least two times. And before that point, it was added to 16 playlists. So I honestly, I think those are some pretty good numbers um, for sure. I think the Spotify algorithm is definitely looking at these two things in particular. Um, so I think 50% is honestly quite good for a track and I'm pretty happy with that. Also, what's interesting is before it hit the editorial playlist, the Spotify uh, SPI, the Spotify popularity index was just hovering at around two. And then once it started getting into the editorials, it jumped up to 16 and then ultimately looks to be staying at around 28. Um, so that's how it looks like first couple of the first like five days or so it was about 50 streams 70 streams 100 streams so pretty good results in the first couple days it looks like this is probably the friday where it was added to the playlist you can see the streams jumped up to like 400 300 it even went up to about a thousand per day at a certain point as well so that is a look at the tracker information so let's move on to the actual spotify for artists section and we'll take a look at see if we can find anything interesting about this release over there. So this is a look at my Spotify for Artists backend. Let's go ahead and change this to, I guess, the last 12 months. 
Hopefully you can see that, but it looks like you can't. So I'm just gonna change it to custom. We started on the 11th and we'll do from now. That looks a lot better. So you can see the first couple of days was when I was running the ads. I think honestly 50 to 100 streams per day for the ads is, is pretty decent. Then you can see on the first Friday it hit a jolt. This would most likely be the release radar push. Um, and I think it was also a new music Friday crate digger. So we'll have a look at the playlist in a second as well. Then the first week it kind of was chilling and then we had a pretty big jump here on the Wednesday. I think this may have been a fresh finds playlist ad. And you can see this kept it pretty strong for a couple weeks. And then now it seems to be hovering at around around 100 streams per day so it's pretty good uh, at this point in time the breakdown of where the streams were coming from uh, the profile and catalog has dropped consistently as you can see at the beginning it was quite high most of the streams here uh, if you're looking over where my mouse is it was like 60 50 percent were coming from the profile that's because most of the streams were coming from the facebook ads that i was running and then now at this point the editorials have completely dominated 64 percent coming from the editorials and uh this is what i really like to see where 19 and 4 percent are coming from listener playlists and that's really what's going to drive the long term streams to this song the people that are actually saving it uh, let's have a look at wh where people have been streaming it from the majority was coming from the united states with 5,000 streams coming from there uh, then followed by mexico at 500 uk at 400 germany at 400 russia at 350 canada at 300 kind of from there australia netherlands poland france stuff like that but it's smaller number it's around 100 to 300 so we won't dive too deep into that biggest thing was the united states that's kind of what i like to see and a lot of these um uh, i hate to say it, but kind of like first world countries not that there's anything wrong with any of these other countries but uh stuff like united united states united kingdom germany canada australia there's higher uh stream rates which is one thing but also i have a feeling that uh, well, an educated feeling that the algorithm also more appreciates streams that come from these areas. Um, so that's something definitely to take into account. Let's dive a little bit into the playlist. So what we're going to do is we'll change this to since 2015. And by the way, actually, if you, um, if you are unsure how to use the Spotify for Artists dashboard, I have a full uh, video on a kind of a breakdown guide kind of thing and you can check that out above here so diving right back into things it looks like we're actually at 288 playlists added for this song uh, let's see where the most streams were coming from so the top three are the editorial playlists so I was added to fresh finds I was added to Fresh Finds Basement and I was added to New Music Friday Crate Diggers. The Fresh Finds Normal was 3,588 streams, Fresh Finds Basement 2,655 streams, and the Friday Crate Diggers was 1,252. The next big one was Release Radar and that hit uh, 888 streams, so that's kind of nice to get those free streams from the Spotify algorithmic playlist. Again, if you want to check out a video that I did on explaining all of the algorithmic playlists, I'll link to that above and then the fifth position there was uh, a playlist that I created 400 streams <laughs> again I did a play uh, I did a video on how you can create your own playlists to start boosting your own streams and as you can see 400 streams here uh, from my own playlist is quite nice I'm quite happy about that um, and I'll link uh, the video above kind of breaking down how you can create your own playlist to boost your own streams above and then after that looks like we got a couple of different uh, algorithmic playlists radio daily mix uh, deep house for work is actually a uh, buddy I know Dave shout out to Dave Dave. Um, and then other than that, it's a lot of uh, user playlists, which is which is really nice to see. So let's keep moving along on this release. We're going to move back over here. And I think now we will do a dive into the Facebook ads that I was running. So let's go ahead and open up my Facebook ads manager. And as you can see here, um, this is the campaign I was running. There was only one campaign that I ran uh, near the end of it. It was running at a $10 budget overall of the $200 and three dollars and 29 cents um i was using conversion campaigns with the conversion event being a view content which was a button click on a, uh, a smart link which i will also show you in this video as well uh averaging at 26 cents per view content which i'm quite happy with totaling 774 view contents uh let's open it up here and see if we can find any information it's a conversion campaign campaign budget optimization was on let's move over into the ad set so i had three ad sets running at for this campaign and um 
there was basically the change was the locations that I was running it for. So green light is the things like uh, Australia, Canada, United States, United Kingdom, Germany, those kinds of countries. Yellow light is where I chucked in Mexico and Russia and I, and I believe Colombia. And red light was all of the other uh, areas within um, within that, that that have Spotify available in their region. Um, and as you can see, I ended up turning off the red light. It was getting a good cost per view content, but uh, I'm not really interested in getting streams in those areas. I'm trying to do something particular and I think the results are showing for it. But the main things that I ran was the green light and the yellow light. Um, the yellow light in Mexico and Russia in particular, very, very good content views, 22 cents. The green light was a bit higher, but I'm happy to pay a higher price to get my music in those areas. So let's do a little dive into the ad set so you have an idea of what that looks like when I'm running these. Um, what I did was because I had the campaign budget optimization on, I also set a minimum daily budget for the green light to make sure that at least some of the money goes to the green light. And then the custom audiences is the main thing that I've been running at this point because I have quite a bit of data on my Facebook pixel, but it was the the, the Spotify bridge pages, the smart links, uh, anybody that visit the last 10 of those. I have particular pages like a link in bio page, a sample pack page, an about me page on my website. Anyone who clicked the listen on Spotify view content button and then a couple of lookalikes so 95% of all of the videos that I've ever run on ads and Instagram posts all that kind of stuff uh, the last 10 pages look alike uh, those um, link in bio pages look alike 1% as well and it look like 1% on the view content and I did a normal custom audience of 95% all vids so anyone who's watched at least 95% of any of the previous ads and releases and Instagram posts they will also see this uh, and in this one you can have a look at the locations here it's like Netherlands Australia Canada Germany United Kingdom Japan, Netherlands, Sweden, uh, United States, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. For some reason, it shows that age wide open, 18 to 65, all genders. Then detailed targeting, it was also that. And you must uh, be interested in Spotify. And I had the targeting expansion on. Um, basically, I did all placements except for the audience network. So the way I do it is press audio automatic placements and then just turn off the audience network. And that's an overview of that. Then let's take a look at the ads that I was running for this. And we'll take a look at all of them so we can see what was the best performing one. So now I'm in the ad section and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on content cost per result and see what was the cheapest. So it looks like I had about three or four variations, an A, B, C, and a guitar solo version. It's basically just different um, sections of the song with different intensity levels. It looks like the best one was B, so we'll take a quick look at what that looks like. Uh, this is the ad that I was running. Uh, this is what it looks like. I'm not sure if you can hear the music, but we'll click it anyways. Um, it's just a spinning, simple uh, animation video. It says, has a song name, has the artist name, and has, says listen on Spotify. We'll take also a look at what it looks like with stories. It's very simple. I usually do this where I'll create the story version. I can just crop it into the uh, other formats so that it actually shows. Um, in terms of other things of the ad creative, absolutely no text, absolutely no headline, no description, and I chose a listen now button. And we'll take a look at what website it was going to. Yes. So now we'll take a look at what the website was going to. Press preview URL and it should open. <laughs> there it is. Uh, and this is a custom smart link page that I've built using WordPress and a premium theme. Uh, actually, I should mention if you're interested in learning how to create your own smart link pages like this, one cool thing is that this is just made with a drag and drop editor. It may not look super duper cool, but I've been able to optimize it to be as conversion focused as possible to get me the most results as possible. And you can actually use it to create different templates of uh, different styles. You can do A-B testing. You can do, um you can make it look like any other smart link page because it's a drag and drop editor. So if you see like, oh, hyperfollow looks cool, toned in looks cool, anything like that, you can actually use the editor to make it look very similar or customize it completely to your own heart's content. Personally, I kind of copied a similar toned in style and I like having only one button. Uh, that's my personal preference of running it. This is a long way to say if uh, if you want to learn how to create smart link pages like this yourself, I've created a free smart link course, which will show you how to get set up with all this and how to use the editor and all that kind of stuff. It's just a cheaper and more flexible option. And I think it's ultimately the best way. There'll be a link in the description to check out that free course. But back on to this course, back on to this uh, 
uh, smart link here. This is what I was running. It's just the artwork. Again, it has the song name and the artist name um, and the listen on Spotify. Very similar to the ad because I'm trying to keep a very consistent experience. And then the button would go straight to my profile actually because the way that I like to do this is it has the following button right up at the top and also it'll usually show the newest release at the top. So that is a breakdown of the Facebook ads. Then we'll do a quick review of the social media that I was running for this. So on everything that I was doing for the release of this campaign. So this is a look at my um, Instagram profile. We're going to scroll down to where I started the uh, release kind of promo. I did like a little teaser with my little logo guy and like a little bit of movement and a bit of the music playing. I flanked that with normal content where I'm kind of teaching stuff and other releases, me talking, that kind of stuff. Then I had another teaser the day before the release. And then after that, I did on the release day, I have different versions of this spinning stuff, uh, which is just the artwork moving in a section of the song, basically saying like, go stream it and it's in the bio and you can also go to the, you can just type it up in Spotify. I keep it really simple. Then just again, flanking it with, um, with normal posts to keep things interesting, not just overbearing with pr release promo kind of stuff. Uh, I got added to a couple of different playlists, so I made sure to kind of um, celebrate that. And then you can see then every time that you see this pink album art, that's whenever I would drop this. And I would usually drop these on Thursdays, which is the day before the release radar to kind of try to tinkle the algorithm just before the release radar comes up. And then each time you can see it's like uh, release and then uh, some kind of normal content, something performing, something that's just a little bit different, not a promo thing. Got added to a couple more uh, releases, so I did like a stupid little little post on it. Uh, and then again, you can see it's flanked by uh, normal content to not be overbearing with the releases. And so that is a breakdown of my song Love Sick that got on three different editorial playlists, over 10,000 streams, all that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, uh, there is a, again, that release checklist in the description below. If you want to check that out, it also has, uh, inside it, of it, it also has that Spotify stream tracker that you can download as well. And there will also be a link to the Spotify streams smart link course as well in the description. Again, this is my first time doing one of these breakdowns. So if you have any feedback on how I did this, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I'd like to do more of these. I have a couple songs that with over a million streams and I want to do breakdowns on those as well. And I'm, I'm assuming that the more I do them, the more I'll get better at them. But if there's anything in particular that you want to see when I'm doing these breakdowns, um, just let me know. Um, ultimately, I think this was a pretty good release for me. I'm pretty happy with the editorial playlist that, that hit. I'm pretty happy with all of the user playlists that hit. I, it seemed like I got some good sentiment in terms of comments for this release, so I'm quite happy with that. And uh, it was nice to be able to run a campaign where I didn't do too much tweaking with the Facebook ads at this point. I have quite a lot of custom and lookalike audiences built up with my own data, so I'm able to run pretty smooth releases where I'm not making too many changes. So this was a really good for release for me. I'm pretty happy with the results of course if you do the math and you look at like 200 even canadian versus 10,000 streams it's probably that's probably like 50 bucks in u.s royalties that i made for that song not trying to necessarily make a profit off of this i've made profit on tons of other songs that i'll show you in future breakdowns but um ultimately i'm very happy with the results the cost per result was, was nice on the facebook end the comments were good happy with a lot of the placements and the um and the playlists and this was good for me so uh again free stuff is in the description like and subscribe if you found this video useful and please leave any comments on how I could potentially make these particular breakdown videos useful and other than that good luck on your next release and I will see you in the next video my friend have a good one